Esther, chapter 1. An interesting chapter in the Bible. What the Bible says. Now it came to pass in the days of Artaxerxes. This is Artaxerxes which reigned, <clears throat> reigned from India. That's the first time that word shows up. The only other place it shows up in chapter 8, verse 9. Even unto Ethiopia. Now look at a map. That's a vast region. Over 107 and 20 provinces. That in those days, when the king Azaharis sat on the throne of his kingdom, which is in Shushan, the powers, that's over uh, the modern uh, statues over the Middle East. In the third year of his reign, he made a feast unto all his princes and his servants. The power of Persia and Media, that's the first time Media shows up. The nobles and the princes of the provinces being before him. Now this is all after Nebuchadnezzar. This is everybody in the government. When he shewed his riches of his glorious kingdom and the honor of his excellent, that's the first time that word shows up, majesty, many days, even a hundred and four score days. And when these days were expired, done, the king made a feast, another one. There was a celebration for the nobles, the big shots of the, of the of his kingdom. And when that one is over, there's another feast unto all the people, anybody. The first feast was the elite. You had to have a invitation. The next feast is for the people that were present in Shushan the powers, both unto the great and small. That would be the guy with the with the riches and the possession to someone who doesn't have anything. And also could be from size, great, big, tall, all the way down to the little. Seven days. In the court of the garden of the king's palace. Probably a beautiful, wonderful place to be. Now these, these Middle Eastern kings, and even today, when they throw lavish parties, I mean, it is the best exotic food I mean, you're talking about emu eggs and ostrich eggs, and uh, I mean, they build an, uh, a ski loft inside of a, of a building so they can go skiing in the middle of the desert. Money is no option when it comes to these celebrations. And it's to show, look how rich I am. How rich. And look how rich I am. It's also going to go into the middle of this story. Where, uh, where were white, green, and blue hangings, tapestries, curtains, banners, fastened with cords of fine linen. That's expensive. And purple is an expensive dye. Purple and scarlet was a rare uh, powder that you had for dye. Two silver rings. Most common person, you know, be with something like the shower curtain rings you have, but more elaborate here. And pillars of marble. Well, you've been in a fancy place where they had columns and stuff like that, uh, city halls, museums. The beds. Now the beds here would be, it's not a bed like we have in America, it's a, it's a seat where you, you lie down and the head is up. And what you do is you would recline, be, your body would be straight and your, your, your upper chest and your head would be at an incline. And they say this is the most proper and best digestive means of eating. Sitting down in the chair is not good for you. 
And this would be the same position that Jesus sat with the disciples and a with John the Baptist leaning at the breast of Jesus. It's almost like a, a crooked L. So that's the bed there. And that bed will come up in a little bit later in Esther. I was laid out. Were of gold and silver. <laughs> that's an expensive bed. That's an expensive chair. A gold and silver chair. Upon a pavement of red. This is the black top. This is the, the you know, the whatever the, the floor was. Pavement. Our pavement is tar. He had red and blue and white and black marble. We have imitation black and white tiles we put on the floor. It looks like marble, but it's not. It's imitation. This guy had marble of all color, and it was his floor. Massive amount of money. And they gave them drink in vessels of gold. The vessels being diverse one from another. There were not two vessels, not two cups, not two glasses, not two goblets that were the same. They were all different. Maybe one guy had a picture of lions, and another guy had a picture of, of men, or one guy had, you know, uh, palm trees, and they were different sizes and different amounts. And royal wine. But this is not common wine that, you know, you can get in, in, in the grocery store. In abundance. So he's showing off his wealth. Look how rich I am. To the people, to the common people. I'm your ruler, look at me. I deserve your authority. I deserve you, you know, to praise me. According to the state of the king. The king had a law, had a rule. Just watch. And the drinking was according to the law. There was a law. None did compel. No one tried, you know, there was no force. And there was no drive. You could drink what you want, and if you didn't want to drink, they didn't, they didn't make you drink. And you also didn't go above and beyond what the law was. Now, I, I don't know what the law would be. I don't know if you would be allowed to be intoxicated. Today, in the laws in America and England, is, I mean, if you become too intoxicated, we grab your keys, we get you a taxi, and come home. But there was a law. So the king had appointed to all the officers, people in charge of the house, officers. At this party, the police was there. You can't have the police at a bar or at a tavern in America that, you know, that's against the law. That violates the rights of the drinker. That they should not do according to every man's pleasure. I'm going to take that as they should do. wait a minute that they should do every do according to every man's pleasure. I'm going to take that as there was no limit, as you would have the limit today if you were to go to a bar or tavern. And there were men of officers there that if you got too intoxicated. It, there was a law for you that, you know, wherever it was, like today. But it's an open bar, and that's what you would call it, of the best wine. Also Vashti, the queen, made a feast for the women in the royal house, which belonged to the king of the earth. So here's all the men in one area. His queen, his wife, Vashti, all right, she's got the women in the other area. There's no mixing here. When you get the, the birthday of Harry, he's got the girl dancing and boogieing around, exciting everybody. On the seventh day, when the heart of the king was merry, this is the last day, he's had wine. It says, heart with merry with wine. He commanded Milham. Biza, Harbona, Bigtha, and Abigatha, Ziha, and Carcass, the seven chamberlains, that's the first time that word shows up, 
that served in the presence of Azahar as the king. These men here, they were always with the king. They gave him his food. They gave him whatever he had need of. To bring Vashti the queen before the king with the crown royal, having the crown on her head, to show the people and the princes her beauty, for she was fair to look upon. Wants to make a public show. Bring my wife, have her put the crown on, this is the queen. A, a, a party where everybody could do their own amount of drinking. But the queen Vashti refused to come at the king's commandment by his chamberlain. By, by his chamberlains. Therefore was the king very raw, and his anger burned in him. He's angry. And we're going to look by the end, we're going to look at some scriptures, who did right and who did wrong here, according to the Bible. But she didn't come. He's angry. And there's been, I've been in a Bible study, you know, to show up. Or, or, it doesn't just, they, her husband told her to do something. She didn't do it. And then next unto him, go ahead, verse 13. Then the king said to those wise men, the king's manner toward all that knew law and judgment. Now, I don't know if these are the chamberlains, but these are wise men. They know the law. They know the criminal justice system, the law and judgment. Now, this is not the law of the Hebrews. This is Gentiles. And the next item was Karshila, Shida, Adamatha, Tarshish, Mariz, Mishina, Menuchin, the seven princes, not Chamberlain, princes of Persia and Media, which saw the king's face, which sat at the first in the kingdom. So that's what you mean by the countenance when you see in the Bible. Uh-oh, he's mad. Uh-oh, he's sad. Ne uh, Nehemiah was sad in the king's presence. What shall we do unto Queen Vashti? According to the law. Not the law of the Old Testament. Not the law of the Jewish people. These are Gentiles. Because she has not performed the commandment of the king as of earth by the chamberlains. Her husband told her to do something. He sent the man to go, come here. And she outright disobeyed her husband. And Mekpen answered before the king and the princes, Vastai, the queen has not done wrong to the king only, but also to all the princes. And to all the people that are in the province of King Hazaharis. Now remember, this party was for all the people, great and small. The public has witnessed what the king has done. And then what Vasli has done. This is not the elite by invitation only. This is all the people. For this deed of the queen shall come abroad to, uh, to all women. So that they will, they shall despise their husbands in their eyes. If the queen can do it, I can do it. You see what Vashti did? She didn't obey her husband. I can do it too. When it shall be reported, when everybody starts talking, King Asherus commanded Vashti the queen to be brought in before him, but she came not, disobeyed her husband. Likewise, shall the ladies of Persia and Media say this day unto all the king's princes, which have heard of the deed of the queen. Thus shall, the, thus shall there arise too much contempt, first time that word shows up, and wrath by one woman, Vashti. And we're going to look at another woman that's caused all kinds of trouble. In a moment, Lord willing. If it please the king, let there go a royal commandment, this is a law, from him, and let it be written among the laws of the Persians and Median, that it be not altered. That's the first time that word shows up. 
Now the law of the Persians of Medes, you'll see this in Daniel, is if the king says the law throughout the land is 55 miles per hour, that law can never be changed. You can't up it to 65, you can't up it to 70. That law is, it's 55 and nothing else. If a king comes up and said, we will eat no more fish in our kingdom, you're not eating fish, according to the law of the Medes and Persians. You'll see that in Daniel. That Vashti come no more before the king, after her, and let the king give her royal estate what she has unto another that is better than she. Now, we're going to see a beautiful picture here. Now, here's a beautiful picture. Out with the Gentile queen and in with the, the Jewish king, queen. Excuse me. There's coming a time that the Gentile queen is going to be put aside. The church will be put away. The rapture. The Gentile nations are going to have a little rise on the Antichrist, but the one in charge will be the nation of Israel again. Esther will picture the tribulation period. We will see that, and then the coming of the Lord Jesus Christ. Now, let me make also another note in Esther. It's quite interesting. If you don't think Esther is a tribulation book, there is not one name of God in this book at all. You can't find G-O-D. You know what you're going to find in tribulation? You're going to find the devil, the Antichrist. But you won't find G-O-D, God. That comes at the end of the seven years. So it's coming a, the nation of Israel, Esther, she's going to be praised. And for, every, you know, Esther's kingdom never goes. I know she dies. But her, according to the Bible, her kingdom never ends. It ends with happiness and glory by the end of the book. Like the prodigal son. That party of the prodigal son never ended. Oh, the story ended, but not the party. Verse 20. When the king's decree which he shall make shall be published, made abroad, throughout all his empire, that's the only time that word shows up, empire, for is great, chapter 1, verse 1. All the wives shall give to their husbands honor, both to small, both great and small. We're going to look at that in a moment. Because that's a Bible doctrine. And the saying pleased the king and the princess, and the king did according to the word of Malchukum. Malchukum. For he sent letters unto all the king's provinces, male service. And to every province according to the writing thereof, and to every people after their language, there's different languages in this realm, that every man should bear rule in his house, and that it should be published according to the language of every people. Now let's look at Genesis 3.16. We're going to look at some scriptures here, short ones. The law that this guy made is a biblical law. <laughs> and I've heard Christian women. I'm not going to honor him. Talking about their husband. I'm not going to do nothing for him. But I'm going to tell you outright by the scriptures that we're going to read tonight. You are in violation. You are sinning against God. You show up in the judgment seat of Christ. You're going to lose and you won't get rewards. Genesis 3.16, there's no law. There's no Jewish people. It's a man and a woman that built the human race. Eve has given in to the devil, to the serpent. They have disobeyed God. And three curses come out upon the serpent, upon Eve, and upon Adam. And unto the woman, look what God says to the very first woman that is married in the Bible. Unto woman, he said, I will greatly multiply thy sorrow. That is a crate of women today. And no one understands why that woman has sorrow. It's back to Genesis 3.16. And thy conception, that's the first time that word shows up. 
In sorrow thou shalt bring forth children. That's the first time that word shows up, children. And thy desire, that's the first time that word shows up. Thy desire shall be to thy husband, and he shall rule over you. That is the first wife. That is the first commandment to Eve. God did not tell Eve not to take up that fruit of the tree, of, uh, uh, not to eat that fruit of the tree of knowledge of good and evil. He told Adam. The first commandment he gives to the woman, Eve, the wife, he said, all right, you're going to have multiplied sorrow, you're going to have multiple but, uh, conception, but thou, he says, desire shall be to thy husband, and he shall rule over thee. That's a standard that God has sent forth. Ephesians 5, 28. New Testament. Christians. I'm going to tell you, when, when he made that decree that the wives should give honor to their husbands, that's a Bible doctrine. Ephesians 5. And we'll read it all. Five twenty-one. Submitting yourselves one another to the fear of God. Wives, submit yourselves unto your own husbands, there's Genesis 3, as unto the Lord. Again, I've heard Christian women say, Oh, not to him. What did they say there? You treat your husband like you treat the Lord. You want to know some of the problems with marriages are? For the husband's the head of the wife even as Christ is the head of the church and he is the savior of the body. You know what the Bible says about the husband? If he has to, he has to give his life for his wife. Oh, no, not me. Then you're violating the scripture. You know, for a husband whose wife died before her time, his time, and he had ability to save her and he did it, that, that, that's a sin. As, as Christ gave himself for the church, the Bible said. We're not done. We'll look at some more verses. So we got uh, verse 24, same chapter. Therefore, as Christ is subject to, uh, as the church is subject to Christ, so let the wives be to their own husbands in everything. Now, here's a problem with the men. I'm not picking on just the wife. Here's the problem with the men. Husbands love your wives. That's a problem today. That's a big problem. You want that wife to, to give to you, you got to love her. You got to earn that respect. You got to earn. It's not by force. And woe be to the woman that won't allow her husband to help her, won't allow her husband, you know, she won't listen. Husbands, love your wives even as Christ also loved the church and gave himself for it. you got to lay your life down in the line for her. In Corinthians, it says, listen, if you want to give 20 bucks to a missionary and she needs, you know, a night out, she's just tired, she, a, a date night, you take that $20 and you make her happy with a date night. You can give all your money to missionaries if you don't take care of your wife and love her. You're violating the scriptures, husband. And the wife that doesn't give to her husband, doesn't listen to the husband, don't adhere to the husband. Trouble, problems, according to the scriptures. Colossians 3, 18. And this is not a proper subject, not today. I can remember one woman one time poking, smacking her husband, and going, "Not him, <laughs> Watch what it says again. Why submit yourselves unto your own husband? He's trying to, if he loves you and he loves the Lord, he's trying to help you. But if you won't listen to him, it's at your fault. As it is fit in the Lord. So what if my husband asked me something that? As is fit in the Lord, there it is. There's that loophole. <laughs> but even still, the Bible says that they told Peter and John not to preach the name of Jesus, and they did, and they were 
suffer consequences. But if you've got a husband who's saved and loves the Lord, you don't have to worry about that. Husbands, here we go. Love your wives and be not bitter against them. It's not, oh, I'm the boss. No, you work together in Christ. You work together. It's for the glory of God. 1 Peter 3, 1. 1 Peter 3, 1. Peter speaking. Peter writing to the Hebrews. Likewise, ye wise, be subject, be subjection to your own husbands. That's what Paul said. That if any obey not the word, uh oh, violate the word. They also may, without the word, be won by the conversation of the wives. Unsaved women are watching the saved wives. What is your conduct? And with this, I would go into a study of the Proverbs 31, which we're not going to do, into the virtuous woman, how she cares and nourishes and outdoes for her family and those in her house more than her. And then God has supplied her with the stuff that she needs for tapestry, stuff she needs for warm clothes. By obeying her husband and obeying the Bible, God has brought her riches. And he makes a wonderful statement at the end. Beauty is vain, but the woman that fears the Lord, she shall be praised. Not a lot of women in the church today are praised. So, whatever, whatever this party was about, whatever he wanted Vashti to come out and... She was told by her husband, come on out, I want everyone to see you with that crown, I want to see everybody with, with your beauty. And he might have been just saying, you know what? I got a beautiful wife. I'm not ashamed to hold hands with my wife in the public. I'm not ashamed to hug her. I'm not, you know. I want the world to know she, she I love her. She loves me. I'm saying we, we went to a Bible study one at a time and with everything but what we just study now. And we're going to see a beautiful story here out with a Gentile queen because she wouldn't listen. And the church age, the lad to see in church age is not listening to God. Revelation chapter 3. So God's got to close that door. He's closed the door on her. And we're going to get into this woman. We don't know who she is yet unless you've read the book. And that woman's going to be Israel. And people say God's all finished with Israel, not according to Esther. An interesting great story we're going to be doing.